back with Ryder and the crew as they set sail in an all-new live stage show. Paw Patrol Live, The Great Pirate Adventure, presented by Pedigree. X parks the spot in this exciting, action-packed live... Trolling the high seas. For more information on how to join the heroic pups, you can go to pawpatrollive.com. Playing Eagle Bank Arena February 2nd through 4th. Tickets at pawpatrollive.com. Will he testify? Breaking tonight, word the interview everyone's been waiting for could happen within weeks. And there's new fallout from the Nasser trial, the bombshell resignation at Michigan State University. And buy a pen, get some pot, the massive raid at a D.C. business, how police caught them next. Now, ABC 7 News at 11, on your side. You talk about a haul, 17 pounds of marijuana, 10 pounds of edibles, and tonight 22 people are under arrest. Police say they got a series of complaints about the business from neighbors, and once they got inside, well, they found a huge stash of drugs and an entire drug dealing operation. Tom Rousey shows us how police made the bust. Right now, the place is locked, but disappointed customers have been coming by all night. They tell me this is a place where you would buy things like a keychain or pens, and you would just happen to get free marijuana with them. Saturday night, police raided here. Not only did D.C. police make 22 arrests, they say they seized 17 pounds of marijuana, also 10 pounds of marijuana-laced food, and two quarts of oils with THC for marijuana. The place was closed, but people who didn't know what happened came by all night. Have you ever been here before? No. Many did not want to say much, especially on camera. Weed is legal in D.C., so I thought that it would be fine, you know, just to come in. One man who asked us not to identify him said he was disappointed police had raided the business, which is on L Street and called the Exo Lounge. I'm kind of upset. This is a spot that you could come, you know, safe and get your stuff. You ain't got to go to no neighborhood. In December, an event called Trippy Thursdays was advertised here. The ad stressed nothing was for sale. Customers tell us you'd buy other things and then get pot as a, quote, gift. It appears as recently as the past week, marijuana get-togethers like this one were still going on. All 22 people arrested are facing a charge of possession with intent to distribute. Reporting in Northwest Washington, Tom Rousey, ABC 7 News. I'm Nancy Chen at the ABC 7 Live Desk with breaking news tonight. The president of Michigan State University announcing she is resigning in the wake of the Larry Nassar scandal. This on the same day that Nassar was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison for decades of sexually abusing female gymnasts, including at Michigan State. University President Louisiana Simon has faced multiple calls for her to step down for how she has handled the situation. The U.S. Olympic Committee has also announced an independent investigation, as has the NCAA. At the Live Desk, Nancy Chen, ABC 7 News. Nancy, thank you very much. And as Nancy mentioned, that new development coming just hours after a judge threw the book at Nasser during his sentencing with some really powerful words to go with it. Uh, and... Sir, I'm giving you 175 years, which is 2,100 months. I've just signed your death warrant. Well, NASA are learning that fate today after seven days of emotional testimony by more than 160 women. The former U.S. gymnastics and Michigan State University doctor sexually assaulted those young athletes over decades. Mm. More breaking news that we're following tonight, and this is coming to us from Denver, Colorado. That is where right now there is a full-out manhunt for the person who shot a police officer there. People who live in the neighborhood are being told to stay inside and away from their windows as police are outside searching for this shooter. No word on the condition of that officer, but do stay with ABC7 for updates as soon as they come available. Well, the president says he is ready to face special counsel Robert Mueller. In fact, he says he's looking forward to it. The comments coming as we learn Mueller might be setting his sights on the president as the Russia investigation continues. Our Jay Corp is live outside the White House with more. Jay? Yeah, Allison, in this uh, conversation might happen in the next two to three weeks, according to the president. Now, this was a conversation, a dramatic one, between reporters and the president earlier today. Take a listen. It's no secret that Robert Mueller wants to interview President Trump as a part of his sweeping investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election, whether the Trump campaign helped Moscow and if Mr. Trump himself played any role. 
Well, Wednesday, the president responded to questions by saying that he would do it under oath. Are you going to talk to Mueller? I'm looking forward to it, actually. You yeah. Do you have a date yeah, set? Sorry, just you a date set? There's been no collusion whatsoever. There's no obstruction whatsoever. And I'm looking forward to it. Trump insisted during this exchange that people are confusing obstruction with him fighting back against falsehoods. The president concluded this impromptu interaction with members of the press by indicating that he did not care about the Russians during the campaign because he was a great candidate. And ABC News is reporting tonight that attorneys for the president would like for Mr. Mueller to accept both written and live answers from the president. Reporting live outside the White House, Jay Korf, ABC 7 News at 11. Jay, thank you. And tonight we've learned that one of the Americans killed in that terror attack last weekend was a spokesperson for former Trump campaign aide Rick Gates. Gates is one of the people already charged in Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Glenn Selig was among 22 people killed when that hotel in Kabul was bombed. He was also the spokesperson for former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich after he was arrested on corruption charges. The California parents accused of holding their 13 children captive for years have been banned from contacting those children for the next three years. David and Luis Turpin made a brief court appearance today after pleading not guilty to torture charges. Prosecutors say because there are so many victims in this case, they had to be spread across two separate protective orders. Well, good evening, everyone. Our story tonight, weather-wise, we're tracking a couple of things. One, got a few light snowflakes flying around. Nothing of any concern for you. I do not expect you to wake up and see any snow on the ground. Certainly not major issues around the area regarding this. But we're also...